Well, he's back from New York, Blue Blazer and all, standing out out there among all those Heisman Trophy winners. Coach Steve Spurrier joins the program again this morning. Coach, you look good up there in New York with that bright blue blazer. Yeah, I guess uh, I was watching sort of a replay of all of us standing up there, and nobody else had on anything but sort of gray and black, I guess, so... Uh, but anyway, that's sort of that new blue color that uh, sort of goes with Duke, goes with Florida, and uh, the the blue schools out there, I guess. But anyway, uh, I got a few comments on it. I bet you did. Look good. I, you've always been that person who stands out. You see, uh, you're no, different. Not usually. Yeah, uh, well, you had the visor okay. back when you started the whole visor thing and whatever. Yeah. Anyway, nice looking jacket. Well, yeah, there's uh, – I used to always think, uh, you know – somebody once said to be successful in life you can do it like everybody else does it and try to outwork them or you can do it differently yeah. so if there's a little different way to do it and be successful I, I thought that was uh, smart to try it that way well I'm looking at a picture of you with a book behind you that you wrote and that's what you said in the book you can, yeah, do, it, do it a little differently yeah, yeah. yeah. obviously yeah. back in 90 it was only 33 years ago when I was hired down here yeah, uh, yeah we did things a little differently and yeah. Started throwing the ball around, but really we, we played super defense and ran the ball extremely well. You know, Eric Rett's a leading rusher in school history. And uh, so we mixed it in there. We weren't just all throwing it all over the ballpark. So anyway, uh, we mixed it up and had really good players. So hopefully some of those records, uh, our school will come back to, uh, you know, matching them. But uh, looks like we're a few years away right now. Well, that brings me to the next uh, segment I want to talk about. And by the way, I don't think Eric Red ever gets the credit he deserves. I agree. Yeah. Talk about him because I remember the, you had a formula almost where you you try to get up a couple of touchdowns in the first half and run the ball. I can see him run Eric running that draw play. You know, the second half, very effective runner. Uh, gosh, what he had two years, a thousand yards, I believe. Uh, Maybe three, I don't remember. But, boy, he, he never gets mentioned among the great running backs in Florida. I think he's a Hall of Fame guy, I mean, in terms of Florida. I do, too. Yeah, I've tried to mention him. He needs to be in, uh, well, the statue out there. I said, you know, he's a leading rusher in school history. Mm-hmm. And now he was a four-year starter. That, that helps right. when you get to play four years. Yep. Uh, most of these running backs nowadays play one or two and yep. transfer or go somewhere else or whatever. Yeah. But uh, he was, uh, yeah, I think he was healthy all four years. But uh, he uh, he could he could make those first downs on the third and twos and all that kind of stuff uh, very well. Uh, Coach, let's talk about New York for a second. I'm going to get back to the subject you mentioned about the winning record in Florida. Uh, you had a chance, I think, to meet Jaden Daniels. You say look like a basketball player. You talked <laughs> to several players about the money thing, although it's probably private information. But share with us what you. First of all, I thought about Jaden Daniels, and secondly, talk about some of the money conversation. Yeah, Jaden, I just say he's sort of built like a basketball player. There is very little body fat on that young man, uh, but obviously, he knows how to dodge guys. An excellent runner with the ball, as well as a beautiful passer. I mean, he is really talented, and I think uh, most people around the country felt like he was going to win the Heisman because of the numbers he put up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Somebody said uh, we really helped his Heisman push the, the nice. numbers. I think he got over 600 yards against us running and passing some kind of record. But he did that against just about everybody. And, of course, the other players there had super years also. Bo Nix going from Auburn up to Oregon. And, uh, of course, Marvin Harrison Jr., best wide receiver maybe in the country. And then Michael uh, Penix. You know, he's from, like, Dade City. Mm-hmm. I think he went to high school one of those – Schools in Tampa, private school somewhere, I think. Uh, but anyway, he he's had an amazing year, and his team could still win the national championship. Yeah, true. So you said you like Jaden Daniels, nice young man. Oh yeah, they all are. They all are, and they're all dedicated, committed uh, to being the best they can be. The training these guys do nowadays is uh, way more than we did back in the. 60s and 70s, it seems like. Yeah. But they, uh, they've they got dedication, commitment, because I think they all realize there's a there's a lot of money that they can earn uh, as they go through football, pro football in college, and then pro football after college. <laughs> Good way to put <laughs> yeah. it for sure. 
amazing some of the numbers you hear. You want to share anybody's conversation about money, uh, some of the figures being thrown around? You talked to a couple of guys about that, and uh, I think they told you 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 underestimated the amount of money they were making in general. Yeah, and nobody knows exactly how much they're giving these guys. Well, I guess a lot of people do know, uh, but they don't put it uh, in the papers or anything, how much they get paid to play. But uh, 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 a great quarterback making a million bucks is uh, fairly common. I think I've learned uh, uh, over the country. And uh, and then some of the other really top players, anywhere from three to 500000 they get for a year. I'm talking about one year pay. So uh, I don't know if we are giving that kind of money out. Uh, maybe we are. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I, I think quarterback position is going to be. But, hard. you know, it's still a team sport. Yeah, it, is it is a team sport. Uh, the NFL, they have a salary cap. Okay, so obviously the quarterback makes most of it. Uh, but then they try to balance it out. If we could have some kind of salary cap uh, for every team, uh, I think it'd make it a little bit more fair, but I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Would you, how tough would it be for you if you were coaching today to deal with all that? Well, you wouldn't like it, but obviously the, the coaches make a whole bunch of money also. If these coaches are making between seven and or six and nine million bucks a year, or ten, whatever, uh, then obviously the players uh, should get a chunk also. You know, I tried to get it going a little bit there back in about 2013, I think it was. I went to SEC meetings and I said, let's give every player that suits up $300 a game. And uh, they all oh, know that'll never happen. I remember our commissioner saying that'll never happen. And that was, you know, to pay for maybe dinner uh, after the game with his girlfriend or his parents or whoever and help, help pay their travel. Uh, but uh, we waited and waited, and then uh, everybody started filing the lawsuits, you know, to free up uh, the players uh, to make whatever they can. And uh, the government passed it. Uh, it's, it's free. <laughs> you can pay them whatever you want to now. Well, and you uh -huh. threw your wallet up on the table and told people, all the coaches, that that uh, let's play the players and let me know how you feel about it. And the ones who don't want to, I'm going to release your names, didn't you? Oh, yeah, one of the coaches, uh, yeah, well, I don't know about that. I don't want to get in trouble with my AD or something. So he, the next year he came back and he said, yeah, one of my players said, Coach, how come you didn't vote to get us 300 bucks a game? And he had, he hauled around, well, I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. He said, but I'm voting for it this year. <laughs> so we got all, everybody to vote for it the second year. Yeah, well, you were a player coach a long time before. Let's go back to something you said earlier. Uh, you know, it's no secret. Obviously, the, the great days at Florida were really defined by you and Urban Meyer. The, 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 all the wins mostly came those uh, 18 years. Uh, it's been a hard thing to get it back going. Do you think about this, Coach? This is kind of bizarre, if not frightening. I think Billy Napier is 11 to 14, okay? Uh, you wouldn't have lasted after two years of that, Florida. You'd been fired. Uh, you didn't have a buyout, far as I know. Uh, look at these numbers. 11-14, he has a brutal schedule in 2024. Have you seen that schedule? I mean, it's one of yeah, the hardest I've yeah, ever I did. seen. I, I just looked at that the other day. Yeah. Our, our four out-of-conference games, uh, uh, FSU, uh, UCF, and Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, three Power 5 in-state schools, yeah. and I think we got Sam, Samford or something. Samford, yes. Uh, and then the eight conference games. Yeah, yeah it's a brutal schedule. It, it's it's a, a winning record would be very good for the Gators next year. And if it's not, listen to this, if he has a losing season, think about this. The University of Florida Fighting Gators would have four consecutive losing seasons. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, I guess we have to believe it right now because uh, that, that's that has to be a possibility right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wanted to talk to you about, I know, you know, you were obviously a great player, high school trophy winner, and you started the trend back winning again. You brought the first championships to Florida. I know you take a great pride in your university. You're the ambassador. Does that make you cringe to think about that four consecutive losing seasons? Uh, well, yeah, I guess so, but uh, it's not uh, – 
I guess it's not unusual that much all around uh, uh, the South here and so forth. But, yeah, we used to be uh, up there, you know, in the 90s. Uh, Nebraska was the winningest uh, college team in the country, 90 through 99, I think I saw. And second was FSU. They, they've brought their program back, obviously, now. And then I think we were third. And then Miami and Tennessee was in there. So Miami is falling out just like Nebraska a bit. Uh, but Nebraska, I guess, is the one that's really had some issues. They've gone like seven seven or eight years uh, without a winning season. So that that's a, a program that, oh, I mean, they got tradition. They sell out their stadium every game, and, and they are really struggling also. So uh, hopefully we can get it turned around. Yeah. And uh, I know our, our coaches are working hard. Yeah, Billy Napier, I mean, he works hard. He does everything he thinks he needs to do. And uh, and we'll see how it plays out. But what, what's happened now, also, buddy, is all the coaches all over the country. Uh, they they don't come in like Urban and I came in. We came in if we didn't win, our butts were probably fired after you know two or three years of not having wins. But all the coaches now get guaranteed contracts. Yeah. You know, seven or eight years, so forth. I, I know the Nebraska guy; he's got a eight, eight or nine year. I don't know; he's got it. But everybody's got guaranteed contracts. So yeah. uh, I know Urban said there's pressure. There's pressure on everybody mm-hmm. to win. There's pressure on a junior high basketball game to win. Uh, but uh, most most all the coaches around the country have, have guaranteed contracts, as you know. Coach Steve Spurrier, I want to get to Urban here. He made some statements to us a couple of weeks ago, and I guess maybe they've kind of hit the media now, the print media. Uh, and he talked about, you know, what it was like for, for coaches in Florida and about the fans. I asked him about, you know, the, about the rough treatment the coaches get from the uh, – for the fans and how much pressure is on him. I asked him about Billy Napier. His quote was, he said, um, it was a prejudice. He says, hell yes, there is. Well, that comes with a job. I would not panic if I'm the co- coaching staff right now. I bet he says, however, first of all, Florida fans have a right to be upset. They're fans. Florida is an elite place. Ohio State fans are really upset. They're eleven and one. Yeah, Florida I State fans are losing their mind because they're not in the playoffs. That's what makes this great. Your uh, your 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 reaction to those quotes? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I think David Whitley wrote it in his column uh, here the other day. Uh, but well, that's that, that's a fact all over the country. There's there's pressure on the coaches to win, um, and then. Uh, and then if they don't win, they get their buyout money. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you hire another coach, I guess, is the way it happens just about all over the country now. But, uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. hopefully uh, we can get it going. i tell you what, the crowds we had for the Tennessee and FSU game this past year mm-hmm. were really awesome. They, I mean, we were loud. We did our part. And, in fact, I think our crowd – played a big part in beating Tennessee yeah. uh, that night. And, and we played pretty well, obviously, also. And I uh, had a chance to beat FSU. We just uh, yeah, we just didn't do it. Yeah. Here, and here's the one, on, the final one from Urban. I want to get your reaction. And by the way, that interview, which I did, he wasn't being hypercritical of, <laughs> of, 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 of Napier. He was just stating like it was. And oh, so yeah. uh, the, the quote was, I keep hearing about the process – the plan he has, Meyer said, it's got to at some point get going. But I would not panic if I were him. Just keep grinding. Just keep your head down and do the very best you can. So, yeah, the process, but you got to have some results to show. Yeah, certainly so. And, of course, there's examples of coaches struggling early, like uh, Mike Norvell there at FSU, mm-hmm. and then turning it around. So uh, it can be turned around. We know that. And, uh I guess we're all hoping real soon, uh, but like you said, looking at that schedule next year, we need to we need an influx of players and leadership and whatever uh, to to get it turned around. Yeah, Coach Steve Spurrier, who who set the winning trend in Florida as a player and and also a coach. And uh, Coach, final comment: If you were getting up in front of a bunch of Gator boosters right now, and they want you to give them a couple of sentences on the state of Florida football right now. What would you say? Well, I would say I don't know. I don't know the state right now. We're in off season, and 
we'll see if this recruiting class holds up. I think uh, signing day is about a week or so from yeah, now, isn't it? Next Wednesday, yeah. Uh, December, is it 20 or 21 or yeah, two, something like that? Day, but it's next and, Wednesday, yeah. and I think we're right now number six, somebody said. Mm-hmm. So if we can hold on to that recruiting class, that's encouraging. Yeah. And then, of course, the transfer portal, we'll pick up some guys and lose some guys, just like every school around the country. Uh, and then whatever we got, uh, we got to start, you know, building a, a winning team, a winning football program, simple as that. So, yeah, hopefully it'll come this this coming season, next year. Uh, it just We, we just got to wait and see. But I tell people we got to support our coaching staff. They're going to be there. Uh, they, I think uh, our head coach has got a seven-year guaranteed deal. And maybe the assistant coaches have a few years guaranteed. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we got to be stay behind our, our staff. And they're going to be here with us. And uh, let's do the best we can and hopefully, hopefully get it turned around. Good advice there. You're a Gators one way or the other if you're a Gator fan. That's what you got. So, got to dig it out. Coach, final thought here. Just, I'm really happy about this news that we're planning right now as we speak uh, a confab or whatever summit on winning or whatever it may call it at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, which I hear is a pretty good restaurant, uh, sometime in the week of uh, or the month of the Orange and Blue game where you and Coach Meyer – Urban will join them, the, the group, and it will be a charity deal and some uh-huh. special situations, which we can announce. And it's exciting to have you and Urban on the days right there. You represent all the winning good that went on the guard of football. Yeah, that will be uh, hopefully uh, an interesting conversation. Uh, you're going to be our host guy, correct? Correct. And, uh, yeah, one thing uh, I remember somebody told me that uh, one, one reason that uh, Coach Urban and I – one, you know, the SECs and Nationals and so forth is we hate losing more than everybody else. In fact, I mean, it would tear Urban up. In fact, you know, he had to, he resigned here and uh, took a year off. Uh, uh, he only lost one game that year before, right? Right. Uh, SEC championship right. game. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, I mean, it uh, maybe tore him up even a little bit worse than it, it would tear me up. But, uh, uh Anyway, uh, you, you got to hate losing, and uh, hopefully that's uh, that's where our players and coaches uh, are right now. Well, that's a good topic. you got to hate losing to win. There you go. Yep. Right there. Hey, Steve, yep. thanks so much. I'm glad you could join us. Okay, and, uh, it's always good to be on the Buddy Martin Show uh, again. It's always good to have okay. you, Coach. All these all right, see you, buddy. Coach Steve Spurry. Okay, you. bye-bye.